Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here of the RSA conference located in beautiful downtown San Francisco, the security conference of the year. I am here today joined by my fellow analyst David Linthicum and David, Day two, here we go, kicking it off. Here we go again. Uh, so I've got a, a bunch of keynotes just looking at some real heavy hitters and um, you know, people are listening to the messaging and trying to figure out what it means to them. And so, so the, the, the vibe here seems to be we want to learn. And yeah. in other words, there's a bunch of new stuff that's out there and we don't know what to do it yet and we're trying to get everybody else's opinions on what they're doing <laughs> uh, to hopefully help us make the right decisions. And also they're linking up with vendors and they're trying to figure out what, how to rejigger their, their technology stack and how to do things better. And it's, it seems to be like a learning year almost. Yeah. In other words, like if you went back a year, they go, no one saw, saw generative AI, didn't know what it was coming. We saw, now we have the hype waves after a year. Now people are in here trying to figure out how to make it work. And then probably next year, we're going to hear more case studies in terms of how people implemented generative AI and other AI technologies to, to create a better security posture and also to secure systems that are now AI enabled because they have to be secured yeah. differently. We have yeah. to deal with the prompt, prompt security and all these sorts of things, which people don't normally have a clue about. We're, we're normally encrypting, we're protecting, yeah. we're building firewalls around things when something can be attacked from within and it has to have internal security, that's a different way of thinking. And I think people are looking to transform their thinking. Yeah, I feel like, um, I echo your statements, it feels like we're all here together working on a puzzle. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's, a, there's um, an atmosphere of excitement um, there's an atmosphere of we're all in this together and we have to figure this out because it's so important. But I think um, a lot of what I'm seeing too are conversations, and this is I think why it's so nice to, I mean, you and I work virtually all the time. We're experts at it. We did that before a global pandemic forced people to do that. But there's such a benefit of being here and being able to be face to face with people and you know, kind of dig into well, what are you working on or what are you thinking about or what challenges are you having? And I think people are also very honest about where they are in their journeys, even if it's, I don't really have a clue, but I know I have to figure it out, you right. know? And, and, and I think there are a lot of those people that... Yeah, and I think what's changed this year, and you know, I was trying to figure out why such a sense of urgency, and when I talk to the CISOs that are here trying to learn, it's the fact of the matter is, is that they built systems at their ability, at their pace and the ability to secure them. So in other words, they weren't rolling out data, uh, data centers and uh, applications and application workloads and new applications right. without a good security plan. And so the security kind of came in first before the applications were built. And we kind of got to that after 20 years of making mistakes. Now the feeling is, and it's probably true, that they don't have control of those deadlines anymore. Right. So the generative AI systems are coming up and are going to be up and running within these enterprises whether you like it or not. Yeah. Basically the board has made these decisions, the investors are making these decisions. It's not tactical decisions that are made by the CIO and that being the case, it's taking out of, uh, taken out of his or her hands and now they're in a panic because it has to be up and running by the end of this year. How are you going to secure it? And whether you get the security running or not, uh, we're going to go ahead and move forward with it. And by the way, if something happens, we're still going to blame you. So it's kind of rock but, and a hard place. this is a great job. <laughs> yeah, this is a great job. Yeah, we talked yesterday, it was uh, 10 years, 18 months? 18 months, yeah, uh, for geez. a CISO. So, my heart goes out to these very well-paid technology executives. I haven't been one, you know, a bunch of times in my career having so much responsibility, but not necessarily empowered to make the core decisions. So what they're doing here is trying to get to the fast solutions, which is a little concerning to me, because yeah. normally when we get to fast solutions, we start making mistakes. And yeah. so if we think tactically, not strategically, we're not doing some around, something around a plan, that's normally when we make mistakes. And I think we're going to see some of that, uh, maybe not next year, but the year after, we're going to have large breaches that occurred because we missed something that was obvious, but you know, when you get into the triage and why this stuff was breached, they're going to say we were rushed, we had to get it out the door, we were told this is going to be our job, get it out the door, it's going to be our jobs, and so we used whatever tactical security mechanisms that we had in place currently, they were the wrong ones for the time, we knew that when we implemented it, and now we have an issue. Yeah. And I'm not sure 
if that's the right way to do it. So maybe the message here is that this is really important to the business and this is really going to be a game changer. I call it you know, an innovative differentiator. Many businesses are going to be built around their use of AI, the ability to have supply chain automation, your ability to uh, optimize manufacturing processes, your ability to automate information technology in, the way, in different ways and how you do it. That being the case, you're reinventing your business and I understand why you want that technology in place quickly, but this may be a time where we go slower to go faster, and I think that should be kind of the message out there, but the message, and certainly came from the keynotes yesterday, was go, 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 everybody's going AI, hey, yeah. you know, make it happen, which is perfectly fine, but there needs to be some stepwise way in a methodical way in how you do it, different evolutions of technology. I don't think the technology may not exist from the security space is going to provide ample protection from building these systems. So that's the risk, and I don't know if you feel the same way, but no, it's a little I, panic. Well, it's, from somebody who's spent a career as a strategist and who also spent very early part of my career as a paralegal, I think a lot about risk and I think a lot about uh, responsibility and I, I, your story reminds me of, I, I had a situation where I was working with a team and you know, as we've all experienced, senior leaders want this and we want it now and sometimes it's not well thought out or anything else and that was kind of this, particular company's approach to AI and we're going to do it and you know I and a, and a couple of other senior folks that were consulting were saying you know like there needs to be a strategy and a policy and guardrails and we need to understand compliance and governance and, and we're not saying no, we're just saying we have to do this and build a foundation for doing it right. We can't just go off without any oversight or anything else and that CEO ultimately quit working with a group of people who were urging caution and said, I'm going to find people who are going to support my initiative. So, right. so this, you've experienced this, sure. I've experienced this, and so I think that you know, what we're saying is not hurry, 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 but make a plan and do it right. And, and the, the risk here is so great. You know, and there's not, it's not that other transformative things that we've done, you know, it, parts of a digital transformation journey, high, uh, migrating to the cloud, th those sorts of things come with a certain amount of risk. But what we're risking right now is you know, access to things like our critical infrastructure and you know, our data, our customer data, our employee data, all that sort of thing. And, and these are, like, are life-changing risks. So I think that it's okay to, to be the sort of stodgy people that we are to a certain extent and say we are huge fans of quick forward progress. Let's make that happen, but let's right. do it strategically. And, and I think that's what I'm, those are the kind of conversations with vendors that I like the most, people who really get that. Yeah, and not many people do get that. Yeah. And the thing is, people are incentivized to move fast and sometimes move in a reckless way. And I think we're getting to a point where that's kind of coming back. So it yeah. feels like very much like cloud, 2010, 2011, where everybody was just making this fast movement in the cloud, wasn't really thinking about the planning around it, and now we're paying for it. Now yeah. there's repatriation is kind of a huge topic. You yeah. know, anything I write about repatriation, you just hit like crazy. And that's because we're fixing problems that we introduced 10 years ago that probably cost us many, many billions, probably half trillions, and if you add it up with all the businesses, of dollars around the mistakes that are made. And we don't have to make them. So these right. comes into the planning cycle and really kind of thinking this stuff is strategically. And speaking of risk, I mean, we, we had Anthony Blinken speak yesterday, and everybody, I sat through, I sat through that live uh, next door. And one of the things that I think people feel as a risk is that they're not necessarily getting uh, policy telegraph from the government. So they're concerned about policy changing after they've implemented and invested in certain technology directions. And so this may be a time, and uh, Mayorkas is speaking today, maybe he's going to have something to say about this, but the, the ability to you know, tell us whether things are going to change or not and what's going to change and what the government's approach to doing a lot of this stuff is. And I understand this is an international issue and, and our government, the United States government doesn't apply everywhere, but whatever Canada, Mexico, you know, all the South American nations, things like that, need to think about assuring people that the steady state and policies and how these things are going to be managed is going to be one way or the other. It doesn't yeah. mean you have to uh, uh, make a final policy, it can evolve over time, but right now I think the governments out there are really kind of scared to put some lines in the sand, 
and business is afraid they're going to do that after the implementation occurred. Yeah. I would have loved to hear yesterday, it's like, listen, look, this is what we're going to do, this is what we're not going to do, we're not interested in regulating this, we may have to look at this because of uh, constitutional issues, and, uh, and you know, he's looking <laughs> at diplomacy and things like that yeah. and, uh, as ways in which we can do better security, which is negotiating with com countries not to attack us. <laughs> Um, Always but, works so well. It, it, uh, yeah, it's, they, they just, oh thank, oh I'm sorry, it was <laughs> our bad, we didn't mean to. Uh, but I, I think we need to have a closer relationship. All the companies that are here today and all the business leaders that are here today, and all the CISOs that are here today, probably represent many trillions of dollars in business yeah. and many millions of people who work for them. So everybody has a stake in this and I think it, more coordination between the government and some of the technology leaders. I understand we're having you know, conversations on the Hill and things like that, but I'm talking about a deep understanding and a deep coordination where things are generated. Right. In other words, here's our policy, here's what we're going to do, uh, here's what we're not going to do, and we understand everybody needs to move forward as quickly as they can with this technology, and so understanding that, you can mitigate some of your risk based on this. Now obviously it's going to change over time, right. laws and regulations change because it's a political thing, but that seems to be a risk that I didn't hear a lot about 10 years ago that seems to be a larger risk today. And the, the common question I get, maybe because I live in Washington DC, is what's the government going to do here? What regulations are going to start to emerge? What risk are we going to have that we're going to build a system, make huge uh, game-changing investments, and the government's going to make us hit the reset button, or whatever state and local governments that are there, whatever country you're working out of. It's all the same risk, they're all consistently concerned about that. So do you think uh, we're overly concerned about the risk? Do you think we're not putting enough effort into figuring out, uh, sorry, we're not uh, proactively thinking through this or maybe being a little bit more paranoid than we need to be? <laughs> I think there's so much there and right. I think that we do need to be paranoid and I, you know, I find myself thinking about, um, you know, the United States has traditionally lagged behind regulations in the EU and you know, and the whole China thing is a completely different conversation. But I think this is an area where we, we have to get it together. You know, I mean, we can't sit around and wait and, and to come to the table with solutions that make sense and things that have teeth to a certain extent. And you know, I, I get so tired of the conversation of, you know, regulation, squashes innovation and you know like shut up you know i mean <laughs> you know you have to have some regulation you with something as powerful as right. artificial intelligence i mean that is not going to you know squash innovation in any way and so I do think that we look to the government to kind of step up here, um, and it, it's hard to be encouraged about that because I feel like so many of the people that are involved in making these decisions, and you know, prove me wrong, please. Like, if you're here, if you're listening, come prove me right. wrong. But I feel like in so many instances, just based on congressional hearings that I've heard and that sort of thing, I mean, some of the people making these decisions have no knowledge, no experience whatsoever in technology or understanding of, of how transformative this is and it's like, and you're making policy decisions? That's frustrating. It is frustrating. I remember when, uh, back when the internet first coming out when they would give URLs, that was always crass. It's H-T-W-W. -W. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you have some cracks. <laughs> but you know, the other thing I'm seeing is the pace of innovation uh, in terms of the security area. I'm seeing a pattern where it's, of course, lots of great announcements are going to be made this week around very val very cool companies that are announcing technology that's uh, you know, going to aid in us becoming better at AI stuff, but a lot of the companies seem to be holding back the announcements and holding back some innovation, and if you talk to them about that, and I say, I thought you were going to announce something, this, well, we, we're pushing it off for another six months, and the reason why is because this is so important to them, the ability to kind of get the AI security right, that they don't necessarily want to show their cards this early, and they may have to invest much more in the innovation of the technology yeah. moving forward. So, this, this may be a building RSA, you know, so to speak. We'll look back at this, yeah. where everything has a theme, that uh, everybody was, and f figuring out, uh, trying to get introduced to what AI was last year. Now this is building the solutions, you're going to take the security solutions to the next level, and then next year will be the huge rollouts of technology where everybody's going to have a different perspective on this, figure out the pragmatic use, 
Uh, figure out the use cases, which I, is a big problem right now. We're just using this yeah. stuff for too much stuff. Also figuring out the viability and sustainability of it. So that seems to be something that is repeating uh, this time. And I think, by the way, the cloud providers, if you look at the, the sister conferences for this, where they're not focused on security, they're just focused on cloud technology, things like that, are doing similar things. Yeah. In other words, they, they are announcing certain technologies, but as far as game-changing things, things that are really going to get us to where we need to be around AI, those things, I think, are still being built. Yeah. What, are you, what are you feeling on that? I absolutely agree, and I think that, you know, this, this seems to be a year of thinking about and talking about what AI can do, what the dangers are, and I think that you're absolutely right. I think next year we're going to hopefully see these are solutions that came out of all of the deep dives and all the discussions and all the challenges that we've worked. And, and also um, building upon the beta tests that we have and the use cases and we have some real traction and this didn't work and this did work. And so I, I feel like we're too early to have that be the theme of this conference. Yeah, I think so, and and the repeating themes um, probably need to be quelled down as well. I know everybody's going to leverage AI <laughs> within their security solution. That's table stakes right. now, and that, and so I have three meetings today. I guarantee they want to tell me how AI is part of their security solution now, and we get that. And so we need to think beyond this yeah. stuff. So what are we going to be able to do with this stuff as a holistic integration? And we talked a bit about heterogeneity and the complexity of the security solutions out there now. What technologies are going to be put in place? They're going to normalize and mitigate uh, the complexity within these solutions. Those are the ones that I think need to be made. Yeah. I haven't heard a lot about those because we're just kind of focused on the AI stuff. Right. In fact, we may see a bit of a, of a larger mistake being made at this show, as with the cloud conferences, in that there's so much focus and distraction on AI that we're not continuing the innovation and work on the traditional security stuff, next generation encryption, identity yeah. access management, those sorts of things. You know, coming from a, a CTO space, I was given an, a limited amount of money yeah. to pay my R&D guys to go build things, you know, based on me writing stuff on the whiteboard. And if that money is going into just around, just protection and the AI security stuff and integrating AI within the security tool, you're certainly going to get a benefit from that. But the core concern, I'm hearing this from a few CISOs, they're, they're not, they don't think they're getting the releases and they're not getting the love from their cloud security providers, uh, on-premise security providers, from their core technology partners because they feel they're distracted and working on AI technology. In some instances, uh, they may not have AI in their company for the next three years. Yeah. And so we're getting the, the... I think that's a valid concern. Yeah, it is a valid concern. Yeah. Do you think we should protect against that? Or do you think it's, uh, I mean, I mean, I guess we can't do anything about it, but the thing is, if, um, do you think that the customers should start making that more apparent? Because right now we're in one of these things about hypes being made. Yeah. You don't push back against hype. When cloud was coming up, no one could say anything bad about cloud computing because it was the next generation where the technology was going. Now AI is moving the same thing. Security along the line with that. And so people feel hindered in making those assertions. But I think those assertions should be made. I do and, too. And I would ask, you know, I would ask if, um, if I was a hard hitting tech journalist, I, I would go out to the uh, security providers and tell, talk to them about allocating their resources. They're never going to tell you, but the core right. question would be, are you taking core innovation that needs to occur with your base level product, which is protecting your customers now, and investing it into the next generation AI stuff, which is going to protect your customers sometimes in a couple of years, and sometimes never if they're not using AI. Right. And what are the impacts of doing that? And yeah. I think that may be a tougher question for them to answer. And I think that, you know, it's funny, I'm going to walk around the show floor today and ask them that, uh, just, just to see the reactions that yeah. I get. But I think that's, that's a, a bit concerning from the people who are consuming technology and it's concerning from the CTOs as well because they're directed by their boards of directors and their CIOs and their executives to move in this particular way and they're happy to do that because that's where all the cool kids are playing right, right now. But again, removing resources for something that may be foundational to what their business yeah. is. And I think you know, we may see some odd breaches that occur from that. When you do a triage on that, they weren't getting the updates, right. they weren't getting the, the, uh, uh, the improvements to the systems that they needed. Yeah. And therefore, it was a breach that was caused by AI when AI wasn't around it, just because we're moving resources from one thing to another. It seems like a big risk. I mean, you, st you still have to look out for your existing customer base, as excited as you are chasing AI innovation. 
I would think I mean, that's so. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I would think so, and I think that uh, it's we have a tendency to operate in the technology world. I've been in this business a long time. You know, very much like uh, you know how kids play soccer, and there's no strategy to it. The ball's kicked over there, and they all run <laughs> over there. The ball's kicked over there, and they all run over there. Yeah. And technology's in the same way, and we have a tendency to kind of leave all reason behind if we're moving after a particular hype cycle. And we saw this in, you know, first time we moved to AI in the 80s, which I was involved with, but also, you know, client server and moving to service-oriented architecture and then moving to integration and moving to cloud computing and moving to other, you know, kind of innovative differentiators where people are moving in different directions. There's value in doing that. But in doing that, we have to figure out the pragmatic applications of our technology and where this market is specifically going to go and make sure we're not missing the bigger picture. Yep. I think a lot of people, when they first got in the cloud, missed the bigger picture and it ended up hurting them. And, and that's as that market normalized, they had to exit the market. I think the same thing's going to occur in the security space. I think the smarter technology players out there, um, hopefully it's everybody, but it's not, uh, are <laughs> looking at a holistic market and making sure they're not investing in something that's not going to have a direct benefit to the value and what they're looking to do. Yeah. And, and I think um, customers are going to react. I think yes. they're, I, they haven't said anything yet that where they're making announcements or talking to reporters, things like that. But I think by the end of the year, there's going to be some pushback on the fact that so much has been invested on the AI side of things and not on the traditional uh, security stuff that they rely on now and will for some time. Yeah that there's going to be some risk and damage that, that, that could occur, will occur, and when it does occur, someone's going to yell about it. You know, I very much look forward to having this conversation again later on in the day after you've had a chance to go out and ask those questions. I will grill them so for us. Please do that. All right. Well, that does it for our morning kickoff. Coming to you live from the Moscone Center at RSA Conference, the technology conference in the security space. I'm here, Shelly Kramer. I'm here with fellow analyst David Linthicum. Keep it right here on theCUBE.